<clears throat> Hello everyone and welcome to another Mac 84 live stream. I am Steve, your host, and uh, we're going to be working on some of these machines today. Well, not these particular machines, but uh, I do have logic boards for both the Color Classic and uh, the Performa 500 series that I have to repair. So uh, we'll be switching camera angles over to here when it's time to actually test them. Uh, but we have a Performa 550 here, and we have a Color Classic here. And uh, yeah, these machines are a bit too heavy to bring over to the desk and back and forth, but uh, we're only a few feet away. So uh, thankfully that hopefully shouldn't be that much of a problem. I tell you, getting this guy from one side of the basement to the other is always exciting because I never know if the plastic is gonna crack or <laughs> I'm just gonna drop it. Um, this one's a little easier, but uh, we have our keyboard and our mouse all set up, so uh, we can do that. It's right next to our lovely Quadra 800 here, uh, which has been working great. The case is still off. Um, I'm going to do a video update about that, uh, and we have our lovely image writer down here. So <laughs> if we have to do any serial tests or printing tests, we can do that. So I hope everyone is ready to have some fun today, and I'll give a quick update about those crazy Macintosh SE30 logic boards I played around with before. But again, Performa... Uh, 500 series color classic will be the main focus of today unless something goes horribly wrong. Let's hope it doesn't. So let me switch cameras over here. Mind me one second. There we go. So you can see those machines are behind me. Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Nicholas. Hello, Stella. Hello, Shay. How y'all doing? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We got a bunch of people in the chat. Let me uh, scroll up here. My goodness, a lot of people have been hanging out here. So we have Trina, we have Mike, we have Soulblatz, we have Alex, we have Ashton, we have... Who else, who else? We have Dave. Hello, David. Uh, we have Tech and Music, we have uh, Sad Mac, we have Mingo Hagen, hello. Uh, Chris Zien, uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, Dale. Uh, Orangey, Benjamin, uh, Bard, we have Ivan, Eric, Sean from Action Retro, uh, let's see, Matt... We have Andrew, of course, Nicholas, Shay, and Stella, uh, Adam, Justin, Mozam, uh, Mozam, sorry, uh, Estrella, and Adam. Okay, all right, I think that covered everybody. If I didn't say hello to everybody, apologies, not intentional. So uh, say hello in the chat, and I will be sure to say hello back to you. And Brian, Brian's here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so <laughs> some of you... <laughs> Either were up very early this morning or very late last night and may have caught some of the insanity that went on with this particular board here. Now this particular board is not what we're really going to focus on today, but just giving you a, a bit of a, an update. Uh, Francisco, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Mackenzie, I try. So this is a Macintosh SE30 board that has been provided to me by uh, someone who will remain anonymous for the next few days. I'm not going to make the reveal somebody else's. And so essentially, uh, what we're going to do, uh, what I did last night or this morning or whenever it was, I tried to fix this. And this had a battery explosion on it. There's a bunch of bodge wires in the back. Uh, this, this board is in dire need of some love and care. And I tried my best. I replaced every single one of these chips here. Uh, I did some fixing here. I, I fixed some bodge wires there. Uh, this chip here. This uh, UJ11 chip had uh, some issues, and uh, yeah, I just thought I fixed those, and unfortunately, no. Uh, oh, thank you very much, Sister Hopper, and welcome to the chat. And hi, Mike, welcome to the chat. Uh, ooh, a Newton fan, excellent. Love the Newton. Love it, love it, love it. And Apple Newton fan, thank you very much for joining. Always appreciate your content on uh, social media. Uh, I should be binge watching some Netflix instead, I'll... <laughs> The drama, the intrigue, the excitement. So, um, yeah, this board, um, actually, we had some progress. Uh, so to sum it up, if you haven't watched that stream, spoiler alert, well, you'll get there eventually. But anyway, um, what had happened with this is uh, you get a, a horizontal, very bright horizontal line. And what had happened was uh, I did those repairs I explained. And then we got a zebra stripe, not the traditional zebra stripes, but uh, black and white bars horizontally. And that seemed to be stable until it wasn't. And then all of a sudden I was recording a follow-up video on my phone of, hey, look, and I posted it on Facebook and Twitter. 
And <laughs> it shows it going up, and I'm like, hey, hey, the static noise is gone. And then all of a sudden, boo, <laughs> the stripes go away, and the black screen returns. So not sure if I'm going to be able to tackle anything else on this board. This it seems to be just mocking me at this point. Uh, and, yeah, so I'm not sure if, if that's going to be... Um, salvageable or if i'm going to be able to fix it or if the original individual will have better luck with it now that i've uh, poked and prodded it a bit but um it's certainly one of those machines that makes you scratch your head and go what is happening what is happening uh i did take um I d uh, the ue8 ud8 f25 3 f25 3 f25 3 and ua8 or whatever the, i'm sorry ua9 ud8 i always mispronounce those because they're labeled a little differently um those are all new, and UF8 and UG8 are actually from a donor board. Where did I put that? Where did I put that? It's a, it's a stinky old looking board. Here it is. This little guy, it's got, it's got a bit of rust on it. Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, this actually cleaned up marginally well. Um, this was in the ultrasonic cleaner for a while. There is some rust on it. It is in very bad shape. Uh, I cleaned this up as much as I could. And uh, there were some parts missing. Um, so I figured, you know what, let me just, I don't have, I don't know where the new chips for UG8 and UF8 are. I know I ordered them, I just can't find them. So I thought, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll use this as a parts board. And uh, that didn't seem to have helped. So, yeah, I'll probably actually take those chips off of there and put them back on here. Because I am curious, I mean, I know this looks like it's in horrible shape. But I am very curious if this, if this has any life of it. Uh, probably not. <laughs> It probably just always remains a parts board. But that's why it's here. Anyway, enough about the Macintosh SE30. I have I have a big headache about those machines right now, so no more for now. Uh, here's my wireless mouse that um, either the dongle died or the mouse died, so be awesome if that would work again. But um, Andrew loves Max, or one of Andrew's uh, children loves Max, I believe. Okay. Um, da, 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 yes, good parts, <laughs> Titanic. Um, yeah, I'd love for them to, someone uh, smarter than me, to recreate the SE30 board. That would be fantastic. Be fantastic. Okay, so let's take a look at what we uh, came here to look at today. And that is the board that is all the way over there. So let me go grab it. Sorry, just give me a second. <clears throat> Take this out of the plastic bag. Okay. So this is a Macintosh Color Classic board. Uh, this is a original Macintosh Color Classic board with an accelerator card on it. Now this was recapped in a previous stream. It works, but um, with anything that comes into my area, my queue, my basement, whatever you want to call it, I like to test every part of it because if I send it back and something doesn't work, I could have tested it. Now the board works fine. Um, the accelerator card um, requires some software apparently to work. Now um, it could just be the case of booting it up and testing that out. But uh, the issue with this is um, I, I need to put the data, uh, put that software on the hard drive and do that. So I'm going to give you guys a choice here. Um, yes, I, I saw uh, Kai uh, uh, doing that. It looks awesome. And hey, Luke, welcome to the stream. And so, yeah, they're doing the SE. It would be great if they do an SE30, but um, but yeah, I, I know it's a little more, more complicated of a board. Uh, anyway, so I'll give you guys a choice. Either we can test the accelerator card on here first, which requires me going over there, um, switching over to the Color Classic and playing around with that for a bit uh, to test uh, this, this, or we could dive into, uh, I have, a few boards here. Now I, I do have to look up the notes for these boards because um, these have been here since the summer or so and there's there's a lot going on with these uh, and I actually have to... Oh here are the other chips! <laughs> Here's the other chips for the SE30! How about that? Look at that! Oh gosh that's bad because now I, now I have chips to test with. But here's the other chips for the SE30 Yes, your computer is here, Nicholas. I, I already told you we're not looking at it today, though. Because um, I have to get a part for it, buddy. So when I get the part for it, I'll let you know. Don't worry. I'm sure you won't miss that stream. I will let you know in advance. We'll schedule it. 
But yeah, so here, here are the chips for the uh, SE30 I was looking all over for. I'm going to put those with the rest of those. In this bag, Stephen, you're putting it in this bag on March 7th at 4.27 p.m. Okay. Excellent. All right, so yeah, these uh, these boards uh, have some problems. Um, and uh, so essentially... Uh, let's see. These are both. They look so similar. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. So th there's two color classic boards, and there are there's one LC. Oh, was it a 550 or 580 board? One of the 500 series boards. And so essentially, and I have to double check the notes because because uh, I'll have to review. Uh, this was recapped, even though it looks like it has the original caps on it. It was recapped. Um, but the problem is with the sound chip, and uh, the same goes for for uh, this one here. Uh, there was very low sound volume on these machines, so yeah, there there was either a problem with the sound chip, or as Adrian's digital basement showed in one of his videos, um, there is the potential um, resolution of just it being grounded. So. Uh, you know, when you're testing the board outside of the case or the case isn't fully complete or uh, these little uh, springy things on the bottom of the board, like they're here, um, you know, you, you might not get uh, the sound out of them. So I have to, I have to go through uh, and look at my notes and everything because these boards look so similar to see which ones uh, I have did what already. Uh, this chip, I did swap the chips and there's some bodge wires on there. Uh, so these will be fun to look at and try and um, fix my memory of... Uh, exactly what has to be done next on these machines okay yeah so lc575 board or possible sound chip uh donor board blown sound chip yeah so these these were uh notes written by the original individual who sent these in so brandon uh thank you very much for your patience i just did fix your se30 though so that's something i didn't mention uh to those of you guys who are watching um the se30 um saga did not end with just that se30 I did fix another one, and it turned out it had some UE8 issues, and the video ROM had some scunge on it, so you fix that all up. So, um, Classic 2, is it? Yeah, so, Luke, yeah, awesome. Classic 2 is a great system. Should it's like the budget man's uh, uh, <laughs> SE30. So, just test them. Oh, yeah. All right, Nicholas, calm down. So, um, yeah, these are... These are these will cause some uh, some headaches to test them, but uh, yeah, we'll 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 try and test those boards in a second. But let's let's actually let's go over to the uh, color classic here. Um, I'm gonna boot up the Quadra and boot up the color classic. We're gonna have to get some networking involved here to get the software for that machine over to there. So let me open up. Uh, I got an email here uh, from the individual with the software uh, for that accelerator card. So let me take a look at that real quick. And then we'll, we'll jump over, we'll jump over to that. So let me uh, get that situated here. Ooh, the analog boards of those LC500 series. I am not looking forward to that or any other analog board to begin, <laughs> to begin with. I mean, jeez. Oh, gosh, 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 gosh. Because that is, that is not, uh, not too exciting. All right, so um, this guy believes this card is a Presto from Sonnet. And it does say Sonnet. It does say Presto. Um, and here's the software on Sonnet's uh, website, thankfully, still. Uh, this software is required for the upgrade card. It must be installed as part of the upgrade process. The software installs as follows. System extension, uh, enabler, system 7 is recommended for computers that only support up to 10 megabytes of RAM. LC system software. Okay, so I'm going to download that. And we're going to put that on our G4 Mac Mini, uh, which is hopefully still awake on the network here. Uh, I see the leopard one. Why doesn't the G? Why doesn't the tiger one always show? Well, we could always just dump it to leopard and then go from there. Um, so let's copy that over. Okay, 
uh, and we'll get started in just a moment. Let me just uh, share, uh, sc uh, share screen of the of the Leopard G4 here. And the reason I had to put on the Tiger G4 is that's the one that uh, that can be found from the Quadra. And why isn't it found now? Actually, is that is that on? Yeah, it's on. That's strange. That's very strange. Yeah, no, it's just it's just a regular Presto. It doesn't have Ethernet or anything else like that. Okay, so why isn't this Mac Mini G4 on the network? Oh boy. <laughs> why? <laughs> Nothing wants to work today. Or get or, yeah, today, yeah. Yeah, it could be that. Has it been recapped, Captain uh, 318? Because uh, I know it sounds like a broken record when people are like, oh, you gotta recap it, gotta recap it. But uh, audio issues are generally caused by capacitors because uh, those capacitors are so close uh, to those audio chips that they, they could cause some funky stuff. Yes, there, there's a guy doing some excellent accelerator board uh, sales in Germany. And t trust me, if I could afford those, I'd play around with them. But they are, I think it would be like, I, I think I quoted it would be six or $700 to have all the goodies and have it shipped and everything. So, look, I'd love to play around with those, but I'm not that excited to play around with those. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, so this Mac Mini just does not want to come online. Uh, let's just Let's just see something real quick. Uh, sorry to drag you along into the troubleshooting, but it's always troubleshooting around here. It's always troubleshooting. So no signal from the Tiger Mac. Well, it gives. No, oh, there it goes. This machine keeps falling asleep, and I don't know why, because the sleep setting is set to do not sleep. So that's a mystery. I don't know. I really don't know. All right. Let's uh, try and plug the video cable back in here to the proper machine. Okay. All right. Yes, everything always works in scripted videos because you'd be like, cut! <laughs> and do some tricks with the camera, and then all of a sudden it works again. All right, so now that Tiger machine is popping right up here. We have our folder called Old Apple. We're going to dump the folder, uh, the uh, file rather. Uh, that I just put in there and presto all right all right okay so uh, I'm going to be brutally honest with you when I'm gonna be over there it's gonna be very hard to see the chat at all so um, just fair warning <laughs> so I'm gonna switch over to this mode now I'm gonna make the chat obnoxiously large on this window but it's gonna be very difficult for me to see. So uh, I apologize. Um, this is a very strange setup. I don't I don't usually do that. Uh, but uh, all right, so I'm gonna be going over there in a second. Um, let me grab this analog board. And actually I could use my phone to look at, I could use my phone to look at comments. So, so you, you don't have to worry too much. Okay. So you guys could see me. Excellent. So let me bring up the uh, the YouTube's here. Can I watch my own stream without it freaking out. My channel. There we go. There I am. <sighs> okay. So yeah, sometimes the capacitor leaks to the sound chip, and that's what's actually causing the problem there. So. Uh, all right, so um, what we're going to do is uh, turn on the Quadra because we have to copy the file from the Mac Mini over there to this Quadra and then here. So, all right, so let's turn this on. I love this little Quadra. I promise it's going to get a video update soon. I just have not had the chance to, to film it. Got a CD. I'll just shove it over here. Okay. So this is a Quadra 800. 
on. It has to count all of its memory first. That's where my tweezers went. Maybe. Wait, did I unplug something? Did I? Oh no, there it goes. That memory check just takes a long time because there's 137 megs of memory in this thing. There we go. So that's booting up. <laughs> the obscene amount of memory, exactly. It is a lovely monitor, and, and this was just rescued from trash. It was it was literally going to be trashed. So, uh, I do have to reboot this to macOS System 7.7 .7 or 8 or one of those so it could do the Apple Talk correctly, um, but that won't take nearly as long. And yeah, I mean this this is a webcam. The focus is not going to be perfect, so sorry. I'm just, it's better than seeing this than it pointing from all the way over there, so. Yes, this is the monitor with the ugly cracks in the casing, but I could care less about how it looks, because it is a beautiful screen. I mean, it's not perfect. Uh, there's some warping on the sides and this and that, but you know what? It was free, and it's a Trinitron. I ain't complaining. You know, just going to open up a system picker over here. Yes, it's the G500. Well, it probably has a specific model name. So we're going to reboot to system uh, macOS 8.1 here. Good afternoon, Starbucks Tech. Welcome. There's another monitor like this in the garage with more cracks on the case, but. All right, so booting up to macOS 8, I guess we should uh, turn this machine on. I need more power plugs. I <laughs> just realized that. Um, I need more power plugs. I'm not going to be able to turn this thing on. Um, I have some extension cords. I'm going to have to use one of those. Yeah, let me go grab that. It's a five. It's a five fifty. That's what it is. Performa five fifty. Okay, so just grab a uh, power cord, which I should have like a billion of them just sitting around right here. Of course, when I need it, I can't find them. Okay, here's one. classic here and we're going to insert this board now the computer will work without uh, the software for that cord it just won't detect anything won't detect the uh, acceleration sometimes these are just a bit of a pain to put in you got to line it just right like that Okay, and you see these little clips are touching. Well, you can't probably can't see these little metal clips are touching the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's the low end model. I don't have any of the fancy ones, so I'm jealous of Mike's. Oh, the rubber feet on my uh, classic. Oh, there, oh, there go the toasters. Uh, are degrading. All right, so power into it.
And just plug a keyboard into it. Hopefully my butt wasn't showing, I apologize for what. Okay, so we're gonna turn this on. Saw power. All right, so now we got two classic machines side to side. Hopefully the, the noise from the monitor doesn't screw anything up. All right, so let's go grab that file off the network here. Is it plugged into the right network? No, it's not. Hold on. Oh gosh, oh, okay. Well, I almost fell over there. All right, that's okay. So I had uh, two network cables. I just had to plug into the other one here. Whew. I'm sorry, Luke, if you saw that. I apologize. That'll be edited out of the live stream. All right, so we're connecting the Quadra to the G4 Mac Mini. We're gonna grab that Presto file we need. And I connect to the wrong volume. So sorry this is not on the shared screen, I just don't have that set up right now, so we just gotta wait. Okay. Alright, so we have our Presto file here. We copy that over to the hard drive. Okay, so we have that done. Let me uh, open this with Stuff It. We have to decompress it. And let's see if there's anything on this floppy. Oh, this floppy drive is a little sticky. That's right. All right so it doesn't like that disc. Oh boy. Really? Yeah, maybe if floppy disks aren't going to be the, the solution here, maybe we'll just do a, a local net, uh, network connection, huh? We will borrow the, the serial cable out of our friend, the image writer here. Because with the Mac, if you connect two serial cables together, you have an instant network. It's slow, but for how big is this file? Yeah, it's like a megabyte or so. Yeah, 889K, that would be plenty fast. So, no, I'm not going to bother with a zip drive. That means I'd have to grab two zip drives and two power cables. We're just going to plug this in here. Okay. I always take my life in my hands when I take that thing. <laughs> Only an hour or two. All right, so let's change our Apple Talk port here. Uh, on the printer port here. I forget what port that is because the bezel is not on it. Uh, there is a bezel over here. Let me take a look at that and I'll reference it. It's the one closest to the SCSI port. All right, the one closest to the SCSI port is the is the modem connection. 
Okay, so if I set this Apple Talk, hopefully it has Apple Talk. My God, that screen is tiny. Especially compared to this. Okay, so set this to the modem port. Let's see which one will save the Apple Talk configuration faster. Three, two, one, go. Hit one. All right, so this has file sharing turned on, I believe. Yeah, all right, this has file sharing on. So I'm just going to connect to the Quadra from this machine here. And there we go. We see the Quadra 800. We're going to connect to it. We're going to connect to our System 8 partition. Yeah, I don't know why YouTube notifications don't work. I, I have no control over that, unfortunately. All right, so we need to look at our desktop folder here. And there's our Presto disk. So we're going to copy that. So blazing... 800, 900 kilobytes <laughs> is copying over the network here. So, yay. Faster than me go getting a SCSI, uh, you know, zip drive and all that stuff. <laughs> The stream was recommended to you while watching other things. Well, thank you very much, Willie. I, I hope you enjoy this stuff. Um, if you like the channel, there's there's some great content here. There's a lot of scripted videos. Uh, so check out the main videos playlist if you're interested in that type of stuff. If you're not crazy about live streams, which I understand, not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, but if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so everything has been copied over. So we can disconnect from our Apple Talk network here. And I think we have to install the software. I'm going to open the README on here because I'll probably be faster. Oh, there's no README. Oh, there, wait, no, there is. README. All right, so there are two files we have to install. Uh, Presto 8. Da, 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 da. So that's Color Classic. Color Classic. Uh, d d two megabyte sims may cause system freeze. How much memory is in here? We have 10. All right, so we should be okay. Uh, VRAM expansion is not supported. All right, so... So we have Virtual Enabler and Presto 8. Which one do we need? Um, da, 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 well, I guess, I guess it's going to, there's an install, yeah, here, here, is it, no, what the, is, <laughs> I thought there was an installer, uh, in the new clean system file, you will need to install virtually able, and ex the extension, for, all right, well, I'm just going to copy all of them over, if it can't use it, hopefully it can't, it'll just, you know, do what it has to do. Uh, while we're here, uh, I think I need I think I need to download uh, that speed program. Oh, I can't type. The speedometer, speedometer, speed disk, check speed. 
Um, yeah, let me uh, let me grab that. Sorry, just uh, catch up on the chat here. I apologize. That's very cool, Willie. I'm glad your iBook is working. That's nice. Oh, that is tempting tech and music. Yeah, I mean, any any processor upgrade cards are generally collectible. Um, it's just because they were very expensive back in the day and they don't make them anymore and anybody with older machines is trying to upgrade them these days. Uh, let me just switch over to this view here while I download... Uh, the speedometer from the lovely Macintosh Garden. It's a fantastic website. Uh, that will uh, help us uh, with the confirm the speed of our upgrade card here. And it looks like I already downloaded it on here. So let me let me copy it over. Oopsie. Okay. And let me just uh, copy that over from the the Leopard Mac to the G4 Mac. Well, the Tiger Mac, rather. I should have this automated with scripts and stuff like that, but uh, I do not. Maybe one day. Okay, great. All right, so I should be able to grab that on the other one. Ah, 7600. Yeah, I mean, it, it would help. Um, but in all honesty, and this is this is just my opinion. In all honesty, the money you would spend on a G3 upgrade card for a Power Macintosh like a 7600 is probably better spent on a G3 desktop or a G3 tower. You'll have a faster bus speed, you'll have faster I.O., you'll have faster connectivity, faster everything. Um, that's just that's just my opinion here. Because you're, you're still dealing with the slower bus and the slower I.O. of everything else on the 7600. If, if that's what you're talking about. If, if I'm just reading the chat too quickly. Sorry. So I'm switching the network connection back to Apple Talk over here. And going to Chooser. Going to connect to our Tiger machine. Gonna catch that volume. Gonna copy over our speedometer application, which I should have on here, and now I do, so that's great. Now open that with Stuff and Expander now that it's copied over to the network. Okay, that's an IMG file, that's just fine. Okay. Just clean up some of this stuff on the desktop here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I have different folders for different hard drives. Alright, well I could I could just I could just do that, because those are copied, yes. Okay, so here's the image. That should be what, a meg? Yeah, 700k. Be perfectly fine to copy over. So let's go back to Apple Talk, change that back to the printer port. I'm sorry, yeah, the printer port here. And we'll be able to connect to that one again. So. <laughs> the hard range screensaver. Oh, wait. Let's make this do toasters. Let's make them do dueling toasters. This is why I can't get anything productive done. 
baby toasters and big toasters. This is the kind of content you come here for, I'm sure. Baby toasters and big toasters. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, so let's uh, get out of the toaster business here. And let's go grab that file. Now this Classic has one of, if not the, original hard drive inside, so it's a little sluggish, whereas the Quadra has uh, a SCSI 2SD version 6 in it, so it's pretty speedy. Alright, so once again we have System 8 mounted on here. I'm going to open up that desktop folder. I'm going to grab the speedometer software. by a list to uh, make it easier on ourselves. All right, so I'm going to copy that disk image over here. That's about uh, 832 kilobytes. So that's going to copy over. You see how exciting this is, <laughs> this stuff this is. That's why it honestly it takes me forever to test the machines. Repairing them usually is a bit quicker than testing them, wrapping them up, packaging them, and sending them out. So I apologize for anyone still waiting on their package to be returned. I do thorough tests. That's why I charge what I charge. So. So for anyone just joining, this is a Macintosh Color Classic. This is a Quadra 800, and this is a Performa 550. Uh, this has a client's board in it. We are just testing the 040 accelerator card the sonnet processor upgrade card that is in here uh, but for that i need to do some software uh addition so i just copied the software from from my mac mini g4 over to the quadra then over to here and so that's copying uh both the software has been copied over but now we're doing a speed test software speedometer uh speedometer however you say it. <laughs> the speed software test is copying over here now so we'll be able to to confirm if that actually has uh, the upgrades installed there. Okay, great. So we got that copied over. Let me eject this share. I shouldn't need that there anymore. And double click on. Ah, are you kidding me? All right, so. It's looking for disk copy and it can't find it. We might have to copy it over if, uh, from this machine. Yeah. Oh, we have Mac check on here. That should help too. Yeah, let's let's copy disk copy. So connect to the Quadra again. I know I shouldn't have disconnected it that early, but. This copy is something I need anyway on this. So. And uh, the operating system on this Color Classic, I believe, is 7.6. Yep, 7.6.1. We have 10 megabytes of memory. Forget where disk copy is on here, but oh. it's actually fairly responsive. I mean, obviously with the upgrades and everything, these machines would get much faster. All right, here's disk copy. I hope that's the right version. 
Yes, it is. All right, so let's copy that to our hard drive. It's a one megabyte program. This may, <laughs> may take a little while. Oh, boy. Stop the toasters from stealing the processor. Yeah, soon as I stop that, <laughs> the, the copy progress resumed. I mean, we're, we're copying over a slow serial connection. That's why this take, is taking so long to copy over. Uh, it would have been nicer if the floppy disk drive in this system worked. Uh, that's something I have to replace or repair. I just haven't gotten around to do that. Um, I don't think the Color Classic has the floppy port on the back of it. Um, I'm trying to see if I can see that bezel from over here. No, I don't think I don't think the Color Classic has a floppy bezel on the back, a floppy port on the back. I could be wrong. I don't I don't remember. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't. I don't think it does. So. All right, it's about halfway there. So, yeah, I mean, this stuff takes a long time to do. Uh, this is why I, um, <laughs> this is why I, I told that individual I would, I would test this machine, but it might take a little bit because I had to copy everything over and just copying stuff to this machine from a modern system uh, takes a while. So, all right, so we have disk copy over here. Let me put that in the applications folder where it should be. We go to applications, we can launch disk copy now, which is excellent. Oh yes, yeah, serial install of system seven. My goodness. My goodness. Yes, we agree to the license agreement. And let's mount an image. That's right on our desktop. That's that uh, software that we need. We could skip the uh, verification if it does it. Nope, it did not. Excellent. So we could quit that. We can now drag system eight to the the shared volume to the trash. We don't need that anymore. Uh, and we can copy over. Let's see. We copy just to our hard drive. This mouse is a little weird. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. So, speedometer. Okay, so we can eject that disk now because it's been copied to the applications folder. Um, what I want to do is just run a very quick test uh, to determine the, the speed of this machine. Can you load macOS from cassette tapes? I don't believe so. I, I could be wrong. I mean, I'm sure somebody crazy has figured that out. Um, no, I have not, Garth, unfortunately. It's somewhere. It really is somewhere. Uh, I'm really trying to find that. <laughs> Uh, I think the problem is with the hard drive with the other one, but I appreciate the, you asking, Garth. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you could maybe load... I mean, I know you could load stuff off of a cassette for, like, the Apple II series. Um, I don't think any of that is built into the Macintosh. You just found them! Hey! <laughs> Good job. <laughs> How many punch cards? Oh, Lord. Okay, so... Uh, to register your account, but yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this says it is a 68030 processor. Um, let's see, can we just do a very quick hardware information? There we go. Oh, that's, yeah, we're already there. Okay, so I don't, I don't really want to do a benchmark, per se, because it's just going to take, well, we do a, a short one. I just want to see if it actually run all tests, I guess. Are you sure it could take several minutes? Eh, no. You know what? I, I just want to restart the machine 
and see if it makes a difference. So this says no FPU, it's a 68030. Yeah, so we're gonna take a screenshot of that. And now with those extensions in there for the accelerator card, let's restart. And that should have a, a bit a bit of a change then. We're testing it, Jay. Just ignore Jay. He always asks that question. Why don't you go stream, Jay? Why don't you do something useful? All right, so now we're starting it up. Hey, look at that. Powered by Sonnet. Simply fast. You probably can't really see that, but let me take a picture of my phone here. It's going to take up. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say it's going to take a while to start up anyway, but... It only showed up there for a second. Okay, well that means the software for the Sonic processor upgrades installed. Um, so that should help us. Uh, after I confirm that this board is working, that's great. That means uh, I could ship this back to the client. Uh, I mean, they didn't say the accelerator board was working. They didn't have a problem with it. Um, they just included it along and I was just very curious if it worked, so. Um, <laughs> oh, Justin, I, I feel your pain. You'll find it. Just like I found the SE30 chips. They were shoved in an anti-static bag for some reason. <laughs> a sonnet in honor of the occasion of the sonnet. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <sighs> oh, I'm tired. That was a this long time this morning. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your clock is not set. Nobody cares. All right. So if we go to About This Mac, let's see if anything changed. About this computer, rather. It still just says it's a Macintosh. Uh, so let's go to the speed o meter Yep, there we go. It says uh, 68040 now. So the processor card is found. So that's good. Um, yeah, so 32-bit addressing, all that fun stuff. Uh, I don't think it put a control panel, did it? Uh, let's see. No, there's no control panel here. But that works. So that's excellent. I'm not going to do any really speed tests or anything like that. Uh, it just... I, not gonna do that it's gonna take too long so i'm gonna shut this machine down i'm glad that works i'm gonna shut this one down too because we're not gonna use it for a little bit turn this off turn the crt off okay i'm gonna return to the desk so it can be a moment the need for speed. Okay. This chair is much more comfortable than the other one, I tell you. All right, let me get myself situated here. Okay, excellent. Now let's uh, zoom everything back down to a respectable size so I can actually see things. Okay, there we go. All right, so thank you for bearing with me there. I just wanted to test that, and as you are witness to, this stuff takes time. So, okay, so I can respond back to that guy later and say, hey, works. I'm going to send it back. And uh, let's see. All right, okay, great. So, let's see what we can work on next. Whole, whole bag of RAM to sort. Well, that sounds like fun. All right, so let me take a drink of water. I'm starting to get a headache, probably because I'm dehydrated. Okay. 
All right. Here comes the fun stuff. And by fun, I mean problematic. So. Let's see. There should be... Should be another chip in there, but let's talk about these machines first. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna try and remind my memory here of what the heck is going on with these uh, particular boards, uh, because uh, I was sent three boards, one was going to be a donor, and I wrote down notes about which one is which. So, uh, I'm sorry that's going to be sort of boring of me, like, reading notes and looking. But if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to let me know. Um, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be just here for a while, just hanging out. Well, we have 64 people watching. My goodness, hello everybody. I really apologize, I was not aware of how many people were watching this stream. But um, we're going to be looking at these boards here. So we have two Color Classic boards and a Performa uh, 575 board, an LC 575 board. So thank you very much. Um, I can't play Minecraft now. I'm working on things. Gosh. <laughs> it does sound like fun now. Uh, I play Minecraft on uh, Action Retro's uh, server, so... Oh, thank you, Soblats. No worries. 67 people watching. My goodness. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, so what we are doing is... Uh, actually, let me put up some text here so everyone's aware of what the heck we're working on today. Uh, so let me uh, add a little uh, thingy here. And uh, that's going to be over here. And uh, I will have to edit this and say... Uh, uh, let's see what we're working on. Okay, and let's make that text a little bit smaller. And put that in the corner. There we go. Fancy that. Are you done yet? Oh, how nice. No, Nicholas. We are not. Okay, so uh, let's see. I have an XServe G5. You need your power supply recapped, Willie. Well, I can tell you with extreme confidence that I had my power supply recapped by Jay from the House of Moth. Jay, if you are here in the chat, or are you still here? We have a customer, potentially for you, to have their power supply recapped of their XServe G5. Now, I had mine recapped by Jay, and it's working flawlessly. So I could highly recommend him uh, to do that. So, uh, Willie in the chat, uh, Jay, if you want to spam your website or your email or whatever, um, feel free to... Uh, uh, to connect. Hopefully you could get that resolved, but uh, I can vouch for him. Uh, he's done excellent work. New viewer here. Well, hello, Valero. Uh, thank you very much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And uh, <laughs> your wife says you don't do any work in computers. My goodness. What's the airspeed velocity of Valero's? <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Um, let's see. Relatively new viewer here. I have a fully working LC575 board. Do you want it? Uh, Thomas, feel free to send me an email at mac84tv at gmail.com. Um, uh, Monster Squishy, I do do repairs and stuff like that, so, uh, but they're not free. Um, so, yeah, if uh, anybody wants to contact me, you could please email me, mac84tv, TV as in television, mac84tv at gmail.com. Or you could, you know, just message me on Twitter, I guess. Mac84tv is my Twitter uh account there. Okay, great. Jay put a link in there for uh, his services, so if you need your XServe G5 uh, power supply recap, please contact him. But yes, Thomas, uh, I might be interested in that, uh, depending on a few things, so feel free to send me an email, please. Uh, that is very kind of you to mention that. Uh, I don't know if Jay knows what a Coco is. <laughs> There's 69 viewers at the moment. Okay, so let's make this interesting here. So uh, let me just take a look at these on the microscope for you, so you can take a look at uh, what we're looking at here, and uh, give you a brief explanation of what's going on as I as I look up the notes here. So um, here is where a sound chip should be. Now this is a Color Classic Logic board here, and so this is where the sound chip should be, and it has been removed from this board because this was the donor board, and it has been installed on this board. Well, I believe it has been installed. I think so. Yes? 
I had to check my notes of exactly which chip is on which board because uh, there's, a, there's a few of them here. There's three in total. And there is a, there's a chip floating around in my parts drawer somewhere. I just have to find which it is. It is labeled. And then here's the 575 board. Uh, and yeah, there's the sound chip there. Now the soldering is not perfect because those caps right there, my goodness, they are so close to there um, that I actually did put little bodge wires on there just to make sure that it was making a connection while I was testing it. And yeah, so <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, these, uh, these boards have been played around with quite a bit and I could really not get the sound to work properly. Um, this is something I'm going to continue with today, so hopefully we have some success with this. Um, but from last I tested, I believe this sound chip um, did not want to oper uh, cooperate. Now, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, honestly, uh, taking the chips off isn't too bad as long as you have the proper tools. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not the most fun thing to do. So this is a, um, let's see, let me, let me go check my notes here while I take a look. And, uh, let's see if we can, my goodness, only, well, we, we had 70 people. <laughs> now it dropped a bit. That's okay. That's okay. So I have to look at my notes here. I wish I had some type of catalog system. Well, a better one than the one I use. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look. Um, actually, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look up. I'm just trying to figure out how I could find the exact photos for this board because I take so many photos of so many systems that it's very difficult for me to tell uh, which is which um, because they all look the same. So I'm going to cross-reference the date of when I was last messaging this individual. And take a look. Yes, that's right. Logan won that microphone from David's Vintage Apple Tech. And uh, I hope it's working out well for him. And, um, yeah, I mean, um, David David's channel has been, has been releasing excellent content. So, David, thank you very much for, for uh, all the, the excellent content you've been releasing. Um, I really liked the uh, video that you did about the uh, airflow of the uh, the Macintosh G4 Cube. That was really cool. So check out uh, David's channel in the chat. That's uh, David's Vintage Apple Tech. If you are not subscribed to his channel already, please consider doing so. He has some excellent content there. Uh, while you're subscribing to things, why don't you go subscribe to Mike's Mac Shack also. Uh, he just hit 500 subscribers, but there's room for plenty more, so... Join in on the party before he goes supersonic and just has a heck of a lot of things on there. <laughs> okay, so uh, that this is not an SE board, Nicholas. This is a Macintosh Color Classic logic board. Okay, so I'm just scrolling through my notes here. I'm just trying to determine... Uh, a date here and then I could search the photos on my phone because I did I did take photos with like little pieces of paper pointing to what is what <laughs> so I just have to I just have to uh, remind myself there so you're very welcome David okay so yeah this board is a color classic and you'll you'll see you can take a look at the capacitors here I'll, I'll talk a little bit while I look through my notes you can see the capacitors here are so close to this plastic edge and that just makes it so difficult sometimes to do these repairs because unfortunately with the way those capacitors are and the plastic and everything and you have to heat up those capacitors pretty hot or, or use a soldering iron close to them or a, a, a heat gun and everything um, and that just that just really sometimes just melts that plastic right away so you have to be very very careful uh, use heat shields and all this stuff um, to, to really get that stuff out of there because those caps, removing them is, is pretty simple, but you just got to be very careful with the heat and everything. Otherwise, you could easily run into a problem. Okay, so sorry. The uh, chat history here that I'm scrolling through is very slow to load. So we're just hanging out here. 
<laughs> Burn it for free. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, here's a lot of these conversations. So when was this taking place? August, that's what I thought, in the summer. Okay, so is that a battery? No, this is a capacitor. A capacitor is kind of like a battery. A capacitor stores energy and then releases it when it's instructed to. So it is kind of like a battery, but that's what a capacitor does. That's what the job of a capacitor is. It's to temporarily store energy. Okay, so now I'm just looking through my phone here. Here we go. Here's a bunch of logic boards. My goodness. Let's see, that was August 22nd. Gosh, I was working on a lot of boards at the same time. <laughs> That's when I sort of took a break. Um, honestly, I was I was overloaded with boards there. And uh, nothing wanted to work. And uh, eventually we got some things to work, but it was it was a bit of a, a, a frustrating time. Okay, so that's an SE30. Okay, that's when I ultrasonically cleaned them. So Yeah, I'm just trying to find exactly I know I should have saved it in a folder my favorites that's a thing I really have to do with these pictures because uh, I'll take plenty of pictures of clients machines and go oh, okay yeah that's what I did that's what I'm working on etc etc and then okay that's where I desoldered it on okay great so I could read part of that serial number here uh, so that is T Y. Oh. sorry just trying to read this here okay so that is Y S three well, okay so not this board I'm referring to this board here okay so this board had the sound chip on there the sound chip was removed from there okay and it was placed on which one ID three okay Okay, now this is the other one. So sorry, just trying to backtrack here. Uh, we are working on the Color Classic logic boards now. Hello, Stella and Shay. Hi. I'll see you guys soon. Promise. <laughs> Hope you're learning about old computers today. <laughs> Okay, so it, it doesn't necessarily matter, I guess. I, I sort of lost track at the moment of which sound chip came from which, which is frustrating, but it's not entirely a problem because I'm going to have to test these anyway. Uh, what I will do uh, is I will temporarily, just to move things along, uh, I want to plug this machine into the Color Classic, but I want to test the points on this board here uh, just to make sure that uh where'd our multimeter go uh just to make sure that all of the uh pins are connecting where they should you love my videos well thank you very much uh crazy peanut greatly appreciated okay so we have our multimeter here we are just going to test the pins of this chip see you tuesday exactly Now, just because everything is connected, that doesn't necessarily mean the sound chip is working. Uh, the sound chip could be dead. Uh, I do have a very, very small collection of brand new sound chips now. Uh, honestly, those are for my personal collection of machines because I have my own with bad sound chips. Um, but I would not be opposed to trying one out on a board and say, look... Um, even with the new sound chip, this is what it does, you know. Uh, 
Okay. All right. I'm doing well. How are you? It sounds like a heart monitor. Beep! Oh, God. <laughs> that poor computer. We have to save it. There's a lot of flux here, but we should be getting a connection. Come on. Hold on a second. Backing into your driveway. What kind of stuff are you haven't delivered there, Jay? My goodness. <laughs> She's dead, Jim. All right, so let's try this again. Yeah, so there's just such little... Um, little pieces in there that it's sometimes hard to get the multimeter in there. Well, that's not going to help. Uh, I can take a piece of this wire. Well, the soldering iron's on. Let's take advantage of that. And I'm going to use one of the things that uh, I got recently because Gonna help me out here. And I'll explain that in a moment. Okay. Let me just clip this wire and I will explain exactly what I'm doing. So uh, this multimeter is new and it came with different leads and one of the leads uh, one of the reasons I bought the multimeter is Because it came with these little leads that have little clips on them Which means I don't have to hold the probe into something. It could just uh, It could just clip onto something easily, which is nice. So Yeah, that's a diode it does diode -y things. Don't ask me any follow-up questions. <laughs> okay. So we're going to change the leads on the multimeter here. We'll put these other leads over here. Okay. And, oh, actually, <laughs> I kind of need the one probe yeah let's let's at least we'll keep one and one doesn't matter which one i guess all the people replaying this in the future yes it matters which one what are you doing you're crazy all right so where'd that wire go here it is so i'm going to clip one edge of the multimeter connector to this wire And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this multimeter over here. And then I'm going to use this little very thin wire here. Well, that should be going beep. Why, why aren't you beeping? Oh, we're not in continuity mode. That's why. Oh, why aren't you beeping? I thought this would work. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the idea is, excellent, okay, so this has some crud in there, but I want to make sure that's actually connecting, because if it's not, then that could be a potential problem. Alright, so it looks like maybe that via is not, uh, it's not connecting. How many pins does the sound chip have? Too many. Too many. Um, I think it's 40 pins. I believe it's 40 pins. 
Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Happy little beeps. Happy little beeps. No meeky, no beepy makes a Mac weepy. Oh, that's great. That's going on t-shirt. Yeah, so, um, we should be getting, we should be getting a little beep noise. And we're not getting a beep noise. Yeah, see... I mean, this is a very unscientific test. I'm just trying to, to probe into these little vias because it, it's going somewhere. Oh, boy. Well, I have to scrape them away slightly, I guess. So I want to make sure this is actually getting a connection where it needs to because if it's not that would explain why there's no sound well partially I guess well this could all just be a wild bat to chase I have retro Mac shirts with the uh, silly things on them at Teespring I think they're on my website somewhere or maybe not I don't I haven't really been advertising them all right, that works. Oh, come on. <laughs> JJ wants everything reflowed. It's a solution to everything. Got bad cap, but I got reflowed. All right, so that helps. Hey, Bruce, welcome to the channel. How you doing? You didn't have enough of yesterday, huh? You come back for more? <laughs> oh, goodness. How many lawyers is that board? Too many. Okay. So, um, I'm going to probe the underside of the board here. Uh, where that sound chip is. I mean, it's multi-layered, so it's not directly through. I'm just curious... Uh, if that will help us out here. Maybe? Alright, that's going there. Oh, shut it. Yeah, this new multimeter makes some different noises sometimes. I don't know why. I really don't. I really don't know why. <laughs> oh, yes, lawyers are whips. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. Yes, this is the new multimeter that has a slight delay in the continuity mode. Slight delay. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to clean up the flux and such around this chip. I honestly do not recall. It's been so long of how this operates. And we have our Performa 500 series right there. We can just put the logic board in there and see what happens. Um, from what I recall, there was no sound. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a, a classic board. Well, either way. Either way, we'll be able to figure this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it beeps when it shuts off. It beeps when it shuts down. Um, I like some aspects of this multimeter. <laughs> Others, not so much. <laughs> so I recapped this board. And um, I believe everything works fine except for the sound. So we're going to test that. So uh, I'm going to switch back to the other view here. So let's go. Let's go. Okay. 
Okay, Tango Music, thank you very much for the good luck. All right, so we're going to unplug the board that was in here previously. Yeah, see, this this only has... I mean, this is what I saw in Adrian's digital basement. Uh, this does not have all the grounding clips on the bottom. Only has... Uh, only has two of them. Uh, this one has three of them. It's still missing some. But this is missing... It's missing one near the soundboard. So I'm going to take that off because they, they are removable. I'm going to take that off of this one. I'm going to put it on this one. It's just a bent piece of metal. I'm going to put this one there too. Sometimes they're soldered, but these are not. So this one will have all... I believe there, there should be four total. So one, two, three, four. So I've removed... This is the, the client's board, the other client's board. I removed those two temporarily, just temporarily. Uh, I'll put them back before I send it back to them. But we are wondering if that's going to maybe help resolve the sound issue. I mean, this board has been recapped, I believe. Yeah, well, I know it has been uh, by myself, so I know it should be fine. Uh, we don't need the printer cable here. In fact, I'll go back down over here. All right, let's turn that back on and turn the machine off. Hey, it chimed! How about that? <laughs> okay, so it chimed. Um, I, I'm, I'd have to check the notes to see if it's maybe the sound out of the headphone jack that wasn't working. I do have a pair of headphones somewhere, so we could test that. But let's let's have this boot up. That screen's a little yellow. Come on, baby. Why are you sad? What's going on, buddy? You were working fine before. Maybe you just got warm up. Watch that explode. That'll make me very sad. <laughs> That's right. I had the, the, the Sonnet uh, upgrade in there. Now it doesn't. Oh, I had a set of speakers. They're just cheaper ones. Oh, here's some headphones. Hopefully that yellowing is not uh, anything for the logic board. It, that, this analog board needs to be redone, so. Thank you, yes. Hey, Classy Mac, welcome to the chat. I should have started up with extensions off, but. Bruce says it's the analog board. Yes, Action Retro. <laughs> so this this logic board that I recapped for someone had a 040 Sonnet upgrade card in the PDS slot here. So that that is for a, uh, a client that I recapped. So I had to install the software on here because uh, it's just sharing to one hard drive. So let me zoom in on the chat so I can read it from far away. Yeah, it, it is it is going to be a pain to recap them, but um, I, I have two color classics, so I have to recap it. All right, so we got we hear some beeps loud and clear. Now, Bruce, while I have your attention, if I plug in this class, this color classic board into that into that uh, Performa board, uh, into that Performa thing, will it actually <laughs> the case? Will it actually display? I'm just curious. This sounds a little low. 
Well, let, hold on, that's the alert sounds. Let me go to the main volume. Yeah, that's low. All right, that's pretty loud. Okay, I think it's pretty safe to say that the sound is working on this machine, which is good. So let's turn this around. I'm gonna plug some headphones in. I'm trying to remember, I have to go look at the bezel. Which is the, the headphone? I think it's the one, um, I just looked at the other day for Bruce's stream. Where'd I put that bezel? I was just looking at the bezel. Oh, bezel! Where for out thou bezel? It's the same on all the LCs and all of it. I just don't remember. Uh, it's a Performa 550, Bruce. Oh, where the heck is that bezel? I just, I literally had it like 30 minutes ago. Oh, come on. Come on, man. Uh, all right. I'm going to guess it's the one closer to the SCSI port, I think. But, well, well, we could just try it out. That fan on this classic is a little noisy, too. All right. All right, that must not be it, because unless there's some issue. Oh, it's coming out of the headphones now. Excellent. So it's the sound port is the one uh, further away from the SCSI port. Sounds good to me. Alright, so this classic board at least has working sound. Now, to test our hypothesis, because I, I didn't do much to that sound chip. I don't think anything I just did to that solved the problem. However, I believe these little metal clips on the bottom that I that I got from this board was the solution here. I'm, I'm just assuming here. So I'm going to remove those two clips. And one is right by the soundboard. I'm going to remove those two clips and see if the sound is still present on both the internal and the external speaker. So this is without those little grounding clips. Oh, there's still sound. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess at least you need at least one of those grounding clips. I don't. And now the logic board's behaving properly. The analog board's behaving properly. Let's hold down shift so this doesn't take five hours to boot up. Sorry, just reading the chat from uh, a long miles away. It is booting up here. Let me just check if the other board has ground clips on it. That'd be funny if this was all down to a ground clip issue. Yeah, so this other board has, they both have ground clips on them, so. All right, so this board seems to work. And let me test, uh, well, it works with the uh, let me uh, test the headphone jack in the back. That fan is noisy. Sorry, I can just push the volume button on the front, can I? 
Yep, sound's coming out of there. All right. So we're gonna shut that down. Oh, the uh, little rubber feet on this classic are just wasting away on the desk here and just making it a mess so all right so <laughs> oh god michael's workshop okay so let me uh switch views here so you can see me up close for a little bit okay so um just reading up the chat here Oh, I'm glad you are enjoying those, uh, enjoying the stream of the old Macs. Okay, so this sound chip had uh, some soldering rework done to it. Let's take a look at this before we plug it into the Performa here. Okay, so let's uh, change the view here so you can see what I'm going to be looking at. And it's not the prettiest, I will warn you that about that. But uh, we have to, uh, to clean this up a bit. So let's, um, let's first start off with the Q-tip here. This was done back in August, I believe. There the rest of the Q-tips go, flying all over the desk. Uh, this was very difficult to solder because of just the, the components surrounding the darn thing. Um, it's gonna, I, I think on the bottom of the sound chip, of course I put, marked it on the bottom, because uh, there was a sticker on the top, but it, but it, I think I marked it on the bottom with marker. Uh, I marked which chip came from which machine, which doesn't really help, but... All right, so let's take a look here. Because this was tricky. Yeah, there's just some old flux sitting around between these pins here. Uh, there were some accidental joints, and these, these capacitors right next to This was a broken trace there. I remember that, but the capacitors right next to here just make it awful to get your tools anywhere near these pins here. So I might just have to remove those caps. Uh, I know the person did an excellent job of recapping these electrolytic capacitors because they look brand freaking new and beautiful and everything. But um, I know, Trina, I know. How about, how about that? You know, I, I told him I'd write the documentation. I told him I would be his guinea pig to test it. I told him all sorts of things and he told me to go pound sand. No, 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 I'm kidding. Uh, Bruce has very graciously said that when he has it in a position where I could test out that system, I will be notified. And I'm just a whiny little impatient person sometimes. Sometimes, a lot of the time. So. I get by with the system I have. It's not ideal and I, I have to relook up things often, but... Uh, I get by. Okay, so I'm just checking out this, making sure there's no bridges of any kind or anything like that. Um. <laughs> nothing, Bruce. You did nothing. Trina was just uh, commenting about your ticketing system. See a little baby solder ball there. How dare you work during a live stream, Bruce? I mean, gosh. <laughs> Keep 
doing nothing. No, wait. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, I, I don't really, rec I don't believe this sound chip worked, uh, when I tested things last. Uh, I can't, I, I believe this chip came out of the other classic board. And my goodness, it would be great to have a, a steady supply of these sound chips, but uh, like I said, I have a few, a handful. Some some wacko in Australia bought the rest of the supply. I mean, jeez. <laughs> so let's test this in the LC550. Um, I, uh, I don't think this is going to give us any sound. But let's try it out anyway. Oh, boy. So this is this is my board. This is uh, I forget which one this is actually. It's a 33 megahertz one. This might be the 550. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so this may not give us sound. Well, let's see how many clips are on the bottom. One, two, three, four. And there's some dust on the bottom, but that's okay. So this is a 575 board going into a 550. It has an LC040 or a full 040, I forget. extension cord here. Mm. Oh, <laughs> the power switch is already turned on. So when I plugged it in, I got a little bit of a staticky shocky. All right, let's turn this on. No chime. comes a video. That booted up quick. That monitor is nice and sharp too. So I'm going to move this classic over here, the color classic, uh, just so uh, you don't run into anything. I know the screen is flickering on your side, but for me, it looks beautiful. Oh wait. Was that some sound? I'm getting sound when I move the physical computer. Like, crackly sound. Oh, that's right, there's a headphone jack in the front of this darn thing. I'm hearing static. I have an audio CD. Hold on. If this works, we'll get a copyright strike, but I don't think it's going to work. Caddy CD-ROM, no less.
Yeah, it does sound like there's a grounding issue. I don't know if it would be with the... I don't think it's with the analog board, though, because... I don't know. We'll see. Let's, let's play something continuously. The CD-ROM driver was not loaded at startup. Of course it wasn't, because we were in a rush. Let me bring up the chat on my phone here. So I can see it. I mean, there still is copyright on classical music. Oddly enough, the classical music CD I put in there was Disney's Fantasia, but those works, I'm sure, are copyrighted. All right, so let's, let's just try this. That's weird. There's no there's no volumes. No volumes are shown on the control panel for sound. Have you ever seen this before, Bruce? I have alert sounds and I have sound in. There's no sound out. That is so strange. I mean, I'm pushing the plastic, which I shouldn't be doing on this machine. Um, let me let me do this. Let me shut this down. Ugh. Take out the customer's board here. Put back in my board, which has four of those grounding things as well. Just take a look in here. What's going on? All right, so I see some dust. Um, yeah, that LCD is 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 uh, in a very dangerous spot. I know. I know. Hopefully you don't all go deaf by hearing this. Macintosh repository as all, at all. Macintosh repository is horrible. You know why? All they did was build a scraper and steal everything from Macintosh Garden. So all the nice people who took the time to write descriptions, upload screenshots, and do everything for the content on Macintosh Garden, it was all stolen away without any credit. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. They charge you to download big files. They make you log in. All this garbage stuff. There's advertisements all over the damn page. Macintosh Garden is where it's at. That's my opinion, and no one's going to convince me otherwise. All right. Wait, no. I didn't take the damn logic board out. I, I didn't swap it out. Logic board works. Yeah, they stole a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know the makers of Macintosh Garden are updating the their site to uh, fix the search engine issues. Because I will admit, the search engine on 
on Gordon is not as is not as good. It doesn't pick up everything, but they are working to fix that. Trust me, I know. So, <laughs> misuse the repository for bandwidth. Now I get behind that. <laughs> yeah, the the guy who ran or one of the admins for the repository had a blow up on social media on Reddit. He was accusing this guy of being a complete idiot or, and all this horrible stuff. It was it was disgusting. So. Yeah, the, the garden has an awesome FTP site that works with older machines. So the sound is working fine on this. Um, dare I put in an audio CD to see if that works. So there's a grounding issue on this board. Or maybe it was just dust. Who knows? We'll, we'll clear that out in a second. Now, I'm hearing some, like, whining and stuff. Like, just, like, very... Oh, that's the CD spinning. <laughs> that's what that is. All right, well, audio sounds good. It's about as much as we could play. File sharing turned on. We'll turn that off. Oh boy, I feel your pain, Mingo Hagen. What what's going on? We have a bunch of smart people here. Why don't you explain your SCSI to SD issue and maybe we can help you out? All right, so if I go to the sound control panel now, I should see volumes in addition to sound in and sound out. No, I don't. What the heck? Really? I thought there was a separate volumes thing I saw before. Oh, you know what? That was probably on the Color Classic. That's why. All right, so let me shut this down. Let's just see if it was a dust thing. I have no clue. Again, could be an actual bad sound chip, but... Right, so I think that's actually a 575 board, I'm not 100% sure. These are actually soldered in, these clips. So if there is a grounding issue on this board, just dust this off. <laughs> This has an LC040 in it. Okay. And we should be able to hear pretty quickly if this thing wants to chime or not. Nothing. Nothing at all. So there might be a grounding issue here. That's a guess. Sorry if I woke up your kitty. Okay, so, I mean, the board works. It, again, it could be the sound chip, it could be a grounding issue. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to resolve it today. We've been going for a while already. Let's try the headphones again.
So you hear the speakers pop. I'm just inserting the headphone cable slowly just to see if I heard like any sound at all. But no. Alright, so let's take a look at this again. Christian, do you have a spare G5 PC that isn't working properly? Yes, I have a spare G5 that doesn't work properly. And uh, no offense, but I don't know if it could ever be working properly. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so I'm going to take a, a quick break. Let me uh, run to the uh, facilities upstairs. I'm going to put on the Be Right Back stuff. Uh, and I will be back in a moment. So uh, just hang out for a minute and I'll be right back shortly.
Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we were... I was discussing upstairs with the missus of what to have for dinner, and we said, oh, let's, let's go order from this place, and I'll pick up the food, and yeah, they close early on Sundays, so that's not going to be fun. Uh, so, alternate plans. Um, how about Mac Collections? Why do you guys, why do you guys all have, or what do you guys all have? <laughs> Two very different questions. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm from lovely New Jersey. New Jersey, New Jersey in the U United States. All right, so here is the board that uh, we repaired for our client there, um, and here is the the board with the sound that is unhappy. So let's check some grounds, huh? I mean, the machine boots up, so it can't be a horrible ground issue unless there is. Um, you know, a horrible ground issue. <laughs> so I'm just checking the capacitors on this board. Um, let me go grab the, where did I put the other board? It's right over there. Let me go grab my, my other board, which is simple. Well, it's not the same. Oh boy. Whoops. I'm always tripping over everything in this basement. Alright, so these are other boards here. Oh these are these are color classic boards, I believe. Well one of them is. See that's that's a the problem. These boards look all the same. So similar. Looks like this one may have been... I might be mixing up boards here. Did I label these on the bottom? I should have labeled these on the bottom. Well, I know that one's that one. So that's that. Um... Oh, boy. Let me... Uh... This is what happens when stickers fall off of things. So I'm pretty sure I put stickers on these. Okay, I'm going to really have to look back at my pictures and everything, because uh, I did take pictures of the serial numbers and everything, but... Right. See, I've recapped. Is this the other one I've recapped? Maybe this is the other one from the other individual. Yeah, that, that sound chip has definitely been worked on. Let's take a look at that under the microscope. See, this is what happens when stickers fall off of things or you don't organize them. And I I apologize, this is this is all the way back in the summer. I can't I can't remember clearly. I had issues with these boards and so I'll have to go check my notes, but that's boring to do on a stream. Nobody wants to watch me check notes. Yeah, this is this has been touched up, I believe. There's definitely a lot of flux around here. Let's clean up that flux a little bit at least least we could do. And let's switch over to the microscope view so you guys can see that. Still got 55 people strong. Thank you very much for joining your Sunday evenings. At least it's Sunday here. And it's the evening here, but uh, well, there's definitely a little piece of wire up there. Yeah, this is the board I worked on during the summer. Some dust and hair and junk, that's what happens. Let's see, how many uh, grounding things does this have? This has four, okay, so this should be in good shape. Yeah, I... I I need to find the notes, I need to find the photos, I need to cross compare and all that fun stuff. So that's going to take some time and, and uh, dinner has been ordered so uh, I don't uh, intend to go on for 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't tend to go on for too much longer. Wait, that's bad. Shouldn't that be... Shouldn't that be grounded? Do we have a ground fault on this board? Yeah, these should be... These should be grounded, shouldn't they? Let's try this. Hold on. May have found something. Maybe. I'm not sure. Let's test on this one. Yeah! Okay, there's a ground issue on this board. There's certainly a ground issue on this board because if I touch the outer housing of the SCSI connector and touch those, uh, those areas that should be grounded, I get continuity. But here... Not so much. So, for example, so I'm going to touch the probe here. Actually, we'll get fancy here. Let's use the probe with the clip. So, take out the black probe here. Put that the clip. Turn this on. And we're going to clip the uh, SCSI connector right there, okay? We're going to use the other probe here, and we're going to poke right here. Oh, of course, now it wants to go beep. I thought I found a problem. I guess not. Well, there goes that. I got all excited. Well then. I mean, I could, I could just go and test these boards. Let's just test them. I mean, I have, I have the boards here. I, I am really a little bit confused of which board goes where, because I've recapped a few of these, and these were all in different uh, stacks. Let me write down now which ones came from which stack, because I'm going to get confused. Okay, so where's my keyboard? <laughs> okay. Nicholas, what kind of co trouble are you causing? Be nice and friendly. Alright, so this is YS32010XDY3. Yeah, alright, so I should have a list. Look at my notes. I should have a list. of repair jobs. Oops, if I open the right thing here. Color classic. Did I write down the serial number? No, because I'm an idiot. So it, it's in a photo somewhere. I just need to find out exactly what that is. If I could mark their SE30 as complete because yay! Um, that is, goes from yellow to green. Okay, so. Oh, boy. Okay, so um, let's make sure we got. Eh, yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure. I'd have to check the photos honestly, but let's just test them, just just for the heck of it. So we'll actually know what the heck is going on. Um, so let me write down this board number. Da, 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 da. Yep, that's this one, and this one. Oh, the sticker is a little worse for wear on this, but that's okay. Uh, so this is YS3194, and let's put stickers on them. 
Yay! Stickers! Scalpel. <laughs> Somebody needs to reboot their brain. sticker here and we'll get another sticker these are just sticker scraps but they'll help us identify which one is what oh shut it that's the multimeter telling us I'm gonna turn off you haven't you haven't played with me enough Where's the set? There it is. All right, so let's mark this board A and board B. Okay, excellent. All right, so let's test some boards here because this. Yay. Okay. So this board worked with the, no, <laughs> that was all the caps removed on. Oh, shut it, you darn multimeter. So which was the classic board? I'm losing focus of this already. Jeez, oh, my brain is just shot. I wonder if it was because I was just live streaming like a freaking lunatic all morning and all night. Which was the one that we were just testing? I have too many classic boards. I'm just going crazy here. Now that's a 575 board. Which was the board we were just testing before? In the color classic. Oh, there it is. No. We have four boards here. One has zero capacitors on it. See, Bruce, this is why I need your help. <laughs> okay, so one of these is not a color classic board because uh, it does not have... Wait. Wait, does a color classic board have... I, I hate these boards because they all look the friggin' same. Uh... So this one might be from an LC because the, the memory slots are different. Unless there are different revisions. But they're all 33 megahertz. Well, this is a 16. Wait, Color Classic was 16 or 33? My Daily Driver is a 2012 Mac Macintosh Pro Tower. This is what happens. You just stream for too long and you forget things. You make a fool out of yourself on... On the YouTubes. Yeah, 16 megahertz. Okay, so these are both color classic machines. This looks like... This is a 575 machine. This is probably mine. Yeah, this probably came out of here. So, alright, so... We'll leave you there. So these both have been recapped. All right, this this all right. Here, let me get a freaking another label here. Because this is the board. This is the board that we tested before, and the sound works. Let me. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I guess Steve Brain here. All right. So that's that's board B. All right. So. All right. So at least we could test this one here. We need some memory and junk. Uh, I'm going to borrow it from... What can I borrow it from? Uh, this one here. I 
it. Because the problem is the, the machine I was using uh, while I was working on these machines is no longer in service. That's turned into a server over here. So I'd have to look at my old desktop files for my notes and everything. Yeah, pain in the butt. But we'll figure it out. Even if it's off the stream, I'll figure out which one is which. sound works on that one Th this might have been my logic board because I I did recap my logic boards but I thought I put stickers on the bottom also the stickers I use are probably not the best so they could fall off but sound works on that one to go back and look at some of my live streams because I know I took photos of the serial numbers of what machine was what and everything and I know the documents are on my old desktop so I'll have to find those thought this would be a little more entertaining but at least we we figured out there is a grounding issue or a sound issue at least on that performa board uh, the 575 board so there is a problem with either the sound chip that has been transplanted there um, or the circuitry related to the sound chip there. Um, it, it sounds like at least one of the color classics works. Now the guy sent me two of them. Um, so one was a donor and one was uh, to be fixed up. Just waiting for this lovely little machine to start up here. Yeah, I, I honestly, I opened up FileMaker Pro, and it's the first time I've used it in so long, I forgot how to use it. I was able to open up, like, a sample database and put stuff in. I couldn't figure out how to, like, add a field or add an additional condition. I It was just lost on me. Maybe we could have an information exchange. I could show you how to use the the motion uh, templates in Final Cut. You could show me how to use FileMaker. Refresh each other's memories here. All right, so the sound sounds like it's coming out of here loud and clear. Uh, let me plug in those headphones, see if it wants to come out of the back. Sound comes out of the back too. All right, so shut that down. As the rubber feet continue to disintegrate on this desk. Lovely. Every time I turn that computer, a layer <laughs> of the rubber feet come off on my desk. Oh boy. Okay, let's get back to the desk over here. Yeah, I mean, I, that's that's what I'm using now. I'm using a Google Sheet, but the problem is um, not all the information was in that sheet. Uh, in my infinite wisdom, uh, what I decided to do was write down some notes in a text document as well. And like I said, it's on my old desktop, so... Um, not all of those notes are accessible. I have to figure out what hard drive those were on and everything. So <laughs> I do. I actually have a little Lazy Susan. Well, it's not a, exactly a Lazy Susan, but it's like one of these little um, sphere things with wheels on the bottom. Excuse me. It's made for plants and stuff like that, but it might work for that. So 
You, you think you know what killed your iMac and it's your fault. Uh-oh. Yeah, I do love the designs of the Color Classic and the performance. I'm just checking up on the chat here. Okay, all right. So, I don't know if there's much else I could accomplish today without uh, confirming some information. So, unfortunately, we are, are kind of at a standstill here. Um, I will put... I'll figure that out. But um, I will have to uh, find out some, some other pieces of information here. At least we know that that client board that sent us the accelerator card, that works. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, the SE30, I'm not going to pull my hair out more on that because no. <laughs> um, a bunch of other stuff I have to organize. And uh, oh, this is, this is something fairly new. Bruce, here's your reminder. Buy an ATX extension cable for your Macintosh compact machines. Again, buy that ATX extension cable. Make sure it's at least 11 inches or so. Here's your reminder, buddy. So this is a collection of absolutely fantastic clip art. <laughs> oh my goodness. So this is on like something like 50 floppy disks. It's not a Macintosh garden. I will be imaging it. I mean, just look at all those floppies. Look at all those floppies. Uh, we talked about the SE30 at the very beginning of the stream. Um, I had some success with it, and I posted it on Twitter and Facebook, and then it just went, nope. And I actually posted it on Facebook. Let's see who responded to that, because <laughs> I... Um, I haven't looked at Facebook since I posted that. As soon as I posted that, I went live. I'm just curious now. Oh, I'm copying all the floppies, Trina. All the floppies. <laughs> Five people liked the video. Nobody commented. So, about what I would expect. Um, no, 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 no worries. It's okay. You're just stopping by. No, one, no one's expected to stay through the whole thing. Hey, Scarlet Swordfish, welcome to the stream. So these are from a company called Digital Art, and we have volume 21 and 25. Oh, okay. So these are like add-ons. Volume 25. Well, let's, let's see what we got here. So borders and ornaments, clip art install disc, world maps, more borders and ornaments, mini picks, little critters, little critters. All right, so we got some documentation here, thank goodness, because... Read me first! Digital clip art is now supplied on a diskette in disk doubler compressed format. Before the clip art files can be used, they need to be decompressed. Oh, boy. Uh, we got some release notes here. Getting started. Make a backup of all the disks. Yeah, well... Yeah, some screenshots in here, too. I'll have to, do I'll have to scan in all these, these things as well. Perfect for Quark Express. Damn right. Your newsletter and everything. So here's the user manual. Image Club Typeface Library. Okay. What's that? So this is about typefaces. So maybe the same company had typefaces or... I mean, it's some pretty cool typefaces. I mean... Look at that. Add that to your Microsoft Word document or your presentation or image banner or I don't know what the heck you're doing with it. Pretty cool stuff. So, yeah, so this is just showing you how to decompress things. So I would assume this is like the install disk for like whatever comes on these. And then let's see if we have all the disks. Oh, this is very exciting, but I don't really have much else to show right now, so. Oh, clip art install disk, disk, all right, volume one and two. This is 25. So each one came with maybe uh, each, well, let's see. These are borders and ornaments, volume 23, disk at, oh, 10. 
So there should be 10 of these. Here's six. What? Oh, here's three. Wait. These might not be in order. One, two, and three. Okay. Four, five, six. Okay. We have all the borders and ornaments here. All right. And this is volume 21. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. World maps. Disc one out of six, two. Three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's everything. And then we have, what is this? See, this just says disc one, two, and three, but it doesn't say out of what. So I'm assuming that's all of them. Then we have this little critters. <laughs> what the heck that is? So I'm sure there are many more volumes of these things. I mean, this is probably one thing that you bought some images. And then, of course, well, you need more. So they would happily sell you these packs or whatever. And, uh, and this says it's a collection of them. Nothing on the back of the box. So who knows exactly how many came in with this first set here. The terms and conditions here. Apparently you had to buy more licenses if you have multiple printers. Who's going to do that? Hey, look, we have a registration card. <laughs> Somebody on Reddit had this, and I asked them for it. And they said, yeah, sure. They sent it along to me. I mean, I paid for shipping and everything, but <laughs> it's our product registration card. It's fantastic. Thank you for registering your Image Club software product. And there's... Something, something tells me these folks are no longer located at that address just just a hunch there so yeah i mean each volume was probably a specific thing because we have volume 7 which is world maps we have volume 23 with the borders and ornaments uh volume 21 and volume 25 so that's what we got so far oh the oh there is one typeface okay so this is a typeface library so interesting okay so there's a multitude of things in here, and now, with the way I organize the discs, this won't close. <laughs> so, <laughs> be very careful about that. Uh, boy. Alright, so let's put this back over here. I'll image that when I'm feeling lucky with the floppy drive. Um, it probably will be, because they'll just try and build them and then realize, Oh, crap, that company doesn't exist anymore. Oh, <sighs> okay. Um... Trying to think if there's anything else I could do. I mean, I've been I've been streaming up a storm this past weekend, so um, <laughs> I might not stick around to be honest. Uh, I've been been going for a while here, been going for two hours and twenty eight minutes. Um, I don't think I have much more damage I could do today. We were able to test out some things, so at least there's that. Uh, and dinner should be here fairly soon, so I want to take advantage of that because I'm hungry. But um, <laughs> oh. oh. Michael, that is evil of you. I should just repair the Quadrate 40 AV. Why not? I'm going to waste eight hours of my life. <laughs> Don't you dare stop. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Jay to stream. Jay is going to stream, right, Jay? And um, and you guys go watch Jay streaming. <laughs> oh, boy. But, uh, yeah, when I figure out uh, which board is assigned to which, um, I'll be sure to label them properly again. Maybe, I think the stickers, maybe I took them off when they went through the ultrasonic cleaner or they fell off or anything. Um, I will leave the 840 AV alone. And um, we'll be doing that. Bruce is probably still working, so. Um, yeah. But I am working on a video that uh, will hopefully be released Monday or Tuesday. At this point, maybe Tuesday, because I still have to put some final touches on those. Uh, I have to shoot some footage for that. And uh, wrap that up, and that will uh, be released on Monday or Tuesday, probably one. I don't know which one yet. Uh, there is a preview on my Patreon, so if you are a patron, go to patreon.com forward slash Mac84. Unlike other patrons, I, I don't care how much you donate to me. If it's a dollar, five dollars, thirty dollars, you get the same access to my early previews of videos. So if you are interested in what that video is, go check that out. It would be greatly appreciated. And yes, Bruce is working, 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 work, 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 work. So, yeah, but uh, we've we've done enough uh, enough tinkering 
I think, for a weekend. And, uh, oh, thank you very much, Trina. A very fine compliment from a, a fine patron, so thank you very much. And, yeah, I think I think that's going to that's gonna be about it for now. But, uh, yeah, Jay, go stream. And he's going to just complain that his microscope is fogged up or, you know, he, his bad lighting or he has to clean his desk or uh, one of those things. But, uh... <laughs> oh, great. I'm, I'm very glad, Brian. I'm very much looking forward to your Pippin series. So anyone uh, who wants to uh, jump on to Brian's channel, uh, be sure uh, you do that. Brian, if you want to put a link in here. Actually, wait, I could do that. I can do that. You find, uh, go on YouTube. And, uh, let's see if I can find Brian's computer retreat. Here we go. Oh, I didn't know your Pippin video came out two days ago. What? 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 I'm slacking here. Whoa, 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 whoa. No spam in here, buddy. Come on. All right. So, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep. All right. So, um, yes, go subscribe to Brian's channel, Brian's Computer Retreat. You can search for it on YouTube. He did a great video about his PowerBook Duo. And uh, there's one about uh, the Apple Pippin I have to check out. So, uh, oh, he did one as a libretto as well. I got to catch up. I got to catch up. Ooh, disassembly video. Ooh, we can see what's inside. I always wanted to play around with the Pippin. So, currently working on how to make a CD with your own games. That sounds cool. That sounds very cool. Well, be sure to check that out. So, good luck. Good luck to you on that. I know. I know it's always exciting how, uh, <laughs> how, how those things actually get started to work, but... Yeah, go go. Let's go bother Dana or somebody. He has to do stuff. But I greatly appreciate everybody hanging out today. Thank you for all the super chats, all the likes, all the subscribes, all that fun stuff. Greatly appreciate you keeping me company as I try and fix some of these things. Sorry that we didn't have uh, as much tinkering around as I would have hoped, but uh, that's on me for not organizing things better. So bad, bad, bad. But uh, thank you very much for keeping me company, and I hope you have a great day. And don't forget, I have a video launching early next week, so be sure to check out that. Go to Mike's Mac Shop, subscribe to his channel. Go to Brian's Computer Retreat, subscribe to his channel. Go to Bruce Brankus Creations, subscribe to his channel. Have a good evening, have a good night. Enjoy your dinner, stay safe, stay cozy. Go hug your kitties, your bunnies, whoever you got. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.